what are we told by our Lord about the end times? Wars and rumors of wars is one thing mentioned. We see fighting, but we see no actual wars. We see skirmishes, but no actual wars. And we don't really see a clear-cut winner like we used to. So we're at one of the propaganda, which all of them spew out propaganda, mixed in with the truth. That's the secret to making successful propaganda, is putting something in there that is true and spinning it mixed in with lies to make it the propaganda. So, <clears throat> we know about, unlike the third party candidate didn't know what Aleppo was, but yet wants to be your president, your third option. We know that they want Assad gone. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out. They, they killed Saddam. They killed Gaddafi. They didn't kill Mubarak, but they certainly removed him. They keep getting rid of leaders so they can take over their grip worldwide. That is why they want Assad out, so they can put in their puppet. They want to encircle Israel. For when the prophecy truly fulfills, when they come against her, when they come against Israel, they want all their hardware and pockets of soldiers already pre-positioned before they bring in many more soldiers and hardware. They already want to have a setup somewhere. And they already want all other Middle Eastern countries that will side with them, a.k.a. along with NATO, to be positioned. That's what they're doing this for, is not only just to control, but to have all the toys ready for when it's time that they will come against Israel. They don't want to be over here in the USA and have to fly everything over there. They, they want to make up this crap about we got to take these bad guys out and fight these bad guys and we need to ship these guys over there and planes and guns and bombs and, and, and all this equipment. they got to have a reason to pump it out to you because you'll start asking questions when you hear about why is it all going over there. Well, they make fake skirmishes. Oh, there's real death. And there's real fighting. But it's all contrived by them and planned. So what we're hearing in the last few days is everybody's going off about potential nuclear war on the brink between us and the Russians. You hear Big Daddy Trump talking smack You hear Clinton talking smack. They say if she gets in, we'll be at war with Russia, a nuclear war. He says he wants to be buddies with, with Russia, that he's you know he's the only one that can keep us from, from wars and just general BS like that from these people. <clears throat> Look, our founders wanted us to stay at home. They didn't want us to, in any foreign entanglements. That's what foreign entanglement is. You go to another guy's house, his country, and you get all balled up in wars off your own shore. You're entangled in it then. You're sticking your, your nose in somewhere where it don't belong. Sure, it's okay to try and help them and stuff, in ways that you can without 
sending your military in there with them. That's these people's countries. That's these people's side of the world. Flip the coin over. How would you like them coming over here on your soil doing what we're doing on their soil? Would you like that? Think of how that would feel. You'd be wanting them to get the hell out, wouldn't you? Well, they want them to get the hell out too, but they won't. So are we or aren't we on the provocation of a nuclear war? No, I don't think that we are. I think this is more propaganda. I know there's hardware moving everywhere. There's ships moving everywhere. There's all kinds of stuff moving everywhere. But I don't believe they're moving it in so they can start firing off nukes. Now what happens if we kill some Russians and they kill some Americans and there's actual face-to-face -face killing going on? I think that there will be a de-escalation very quickly. <clears throat> because nobody wins in a nuclear war. Yes, and we know all about they practiced um, going into uh, bunkers there in Russia. It, it was a uh, radioactive protection exercise. You know, exposure to radiation. There's something that's happened. Uh, whether it could be something solar or not, I don't think we should jump to conclusion that it's, it automatically has to, to be nuclear bombs contamination. Because bunkers can be used for mo more protection than just war, right? So you go through this article. And you, you find different things said, statements and military posturing, far from heralding imminent war. It's ridiculous. It's not preparation for war. Um, aggressive rhetoric. They reference the UK, Ukraine crisis. And that's another place where we were sticking our nose in where it didn't belong, and we got pushed out. Well, basically, what, it, what has happened is, is we, they took their side of the world and defended it. They didn't want to stick in our nose in something that used to belong to them, which was Ukraine, which they still very strongly that feel very strongly that maybe someday that they'll all be one big happy family again instead of broken up little pieces of separate countries now. You know, maybe the glory days of old will someday be realized again. We didn't like that. We didn't like us getting stopped from doing what we were going to do. We didn't like it whenever they showed people that we actually set off the chemical weapons and tried to blame it on someone else. We didn't like that. Don't you remember that's when the sanctions were placed? And, and Obama said, we're, we want to do this to change the behavior, their behavior. We want to try and stick it to them so they back off so we can have our way when we do our dirty crap. And then, not long after that, gee, our buddies the Saudis decided to go nuts with pumping a whole bunch more oil. And then the oil market crapped out over here domestically. <clears throat> we got over a thousand wells shut down, and we got a ton of people out of work because of what our country did, along with agreement from our buddies and like NATO and such. We put sanctions on them, and then we cranked up the, the output, trying to damage and, and break their economy, and ruin their economy. We thought, well, we'll hit them where it hurts. We'll hit them in the pocketbook. 
yeah, that'll stop them. They'll back off. But they were very resilient, and they held their own, and they've been coming through it just fine, which shows a lot of uh, fortitude on the part of the people. I know you're going to hear a lot of stuff about this, and it's going to show a bunch of pictures and crap like that on the news. But I believe this is all just more show with no go. Because, let me tell you, nuclear weapons are still a potent weapon to have in your arsenal. Because they're so powerful, but just think of what they got now. It's even better than that. You know, better is in a killing type of a, a better in these guys' brains. And it's far beyond nuclear power. You know, and, and they can they can do things with them that's not going to destroy everything. It's just going to kill you. You know, to leave the buildings standing and stuff. Don't hurt the trees and crap. They've got stuff like that now. We're just humans. We'll die. Maybe animals, but I know humans. But they don't want to show you that. I mean, they got space weapons, too. They can fire crap from above your head and do stuff. This is conventional warfare. They're 40, 50, 100 years more in technology than what they show. With Syria, Damascus will be, there will be fighting. And in my opinion, if, if there's something way more harsh that happens than what has already been happening in the Middle East. I believe it happens in Syria. Whether Russian soldiers would be killed or not, that, that's going to remain to be seen. It is a possibility. <clears throat> Since their forces are in there and they are bound by treaty, I've tried to explain a lot to different people that treaties bind people together, you know, in, in defense treaties and such. They are defending Assad. So Damascus will eventually be a waste. It's the oldest functional, still going city on the planet. But at some point, it will be a wasteland. So what is it other than something very destructive happening to lay waste to that city? And that is why I think that is what will happen. They, they want Assad gone, so I think they'll just, you know, eventually they'll target him. They'll say, okay, we got a lock on him. This is where he's at. We're 10,000% sure. And they'll say, do it. And when they do it, they'll probably drop a lot of bombs. Don't know what they'll be shot from. Could be a destroyer out in the sea. Could be planes. Could be something else. But that's what I believe happens to Damascus, and I believe it's going to happen. To have something to do with getting rid of Assad, because it, you know they already said before it's not if he goes, it's when he goes. So they are intent on getting rid of him. What will the reaction by the Russians be at that point? I don't think they'll fire on the United States homeland. I believe maybe there would be fighting that goes on between us over there but I don't believe that it would be nuclear. 